Ah, the sweet, sweet smell of Waffle Saturday. I officially declare this the best day of the entire week. No contest! The smell of my dad's waffles is better than waking up on your birthday! I'd agree with you, but I'm experiencing a structural crisis. My waffle tower is unstable. What do you mean, unstable? They're waffles, Sam. They just sit there. Do they? Mine seem to have a slight wobble. I think the foundation is weak. Maybe the bottom waffle is too fluffy. You worry too much. Look at mine. It's a fortress of deliciousness. I'm about to create a moat of maple syrup. You can't have a moat if there are seismic events. My plate is definitely experiencing seismic events. Sam, the house is not shaking. Are you sure you're not just wiggling your leg under the table? My legs are perfectly still. I am a statue, a hungry, worried statue. Just watch. Keep your eyes on my top waffle. Don't blink. Fine, I'm watching. This is the most boring stakeout ever. Okay, here it goes. I'm going to clear my throat. Ahem! I didn't see anything. You totally imagined that. No, it did it! It jiggled! Leo, you saw it, right? Your scientific eyes don't miss a thing. Hmm. I think I detected a very slight oscillation. A tiny wiggle. But it could have been an air current from the window. It wasn't the air. It was the waffle. Maya, you have to try. Say something really loud. Seriously? You want me to yell at my breakfast? Yes, for science! Okay, fine. Hey, Waffles! How's it going? Whoa! Now that I saw, the whole stack did a little dance. I told you! I told you! They're alive! They're sentient breakfast food! Or they're enchanted! These are magic waffles! Someone cast a dancing spell on them! This is bad! What if they don't want to be eaten? What if they try to eat U.S.? Everybody calm down! Let's think like scientists. There are no such things as waffle ghosts or breakfast spells. Are you sure? Maybe your dad used a magical ingredient, like unicorn sugar. I'm positive. There must be a logical, scientific explanation. And it's our job to find it. You want to investigate our breakfast? Shouldn't we just run away or eat it really fast before it gets any stronger? We are not running away from science, Sam. We are running towards it. This is a brand new case. A new case? Yes. What's our first move, Professor Leo? Our first move is to gather more data right here at the scene of the wobble. We need to figure out what kind of sounds have the biggest effect. Okay, but I'm keeping my fork ready, just in case. First test, tapping. I'm going to lightly tap my fork on my plate. I see it, a very tiny wobble. Okay, now Maya, you try. Tap your spoon on your glass of juice. Here goes, clink, clink, clink. A different wobble. That one was more of a shiver. Interesting. The pitch is higher, so a high-pitched tap makes a shiver. Now let's retest the volume theory. Everyone, whisper the word syrup. Whispering syrup. Whispering syrup. Observation. No movement. The waffles are still. So they can't hear whispers. They are very sneaky waffles. Now everyone, say syrup in a normal voice. Syrup. Syrup. A tiny jiggle. I saw it. Okay, now everyone shout syrup. 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 A huge wobble. Okay, so the data clearly shows that the louder the sound, the bigger the wobble. <laughs> this is a fun game. What's next? What's next? Next, we test pitch. Pitch is how high or low a sound is. Maya, can you sing a very high squeaky note like a mouse? Mm -hmm. You got it sings a high-pitched squeak. It moved just a little bit, a teeny tiny squeaky wobble. Noted. Now, Sam, I need you to make the lowest, deepest sound you can, like a big bear waking up from a nap. Oh, I'm good at that. Here I go. Frogus makes a very low, rumbling groan, groo wobble. Whoa, look out, man overboard. <laughs> The top waffle almost fell off! That was the biggest wobble of all! Incredible! The evidence is conclusive. Loud, low-pitched sounds create the biggest wobble. So it's a big, grumpy ghost who doesn't like high noises? My hypothesis is that it's all about vibrations. 
Sound is energy that travels in invisible waves. Big, loud, low sounds create big, powerful waves. And those waves are hitting the plate and the waffles and making them shake. Invisible energy waves? That sounds even cooler than magic. It still sounds suspiciously like ghosts to me. How can we prove it? That's the best question a scientist can ask. We prove it by taking this investigation to a controlled environment. We must go to the lab. To the garage. Let's do some science. Can we bring a waffle for evidence and maybe a little bit of syrup? We can bring one waffle for scientific comparison later. Let's go. Welcome scientists to the Kids Club Tunes Laboratory. Okay, Professor Leo, we're here to see the invisible. How do we do it? Do you have super secret spy goggles? We don't need goggles. We just need some clever tools to help us visualize the effect of the vibrations. Our first experiment is called the dancing rice. Dancing rice? Is it a friend of the wobbly waffles? In a way. Sam, I need that big bowl and the plastic wrap. Stretch the plastic wrap over the top as tightly as you can. It needs to be like the top of a drum. Okay. Pulling. Stretching. It's tight. It makes a funny sound when I tap it. Boing. Boing. Perfect. Now, Maya, sprinkle a very thin layer of rice on top. Just a few grains so we can see them clearly. A dash of rice coming right up. There. They're just sitting there. They look pretty bored. Okay, team. Prediction time. What do you predict will happen if I speak very softly near the drum? I predict nothing will happen, just like the quiet hum at the table. I predict one grain of rice will get scared. Let's test it. Leans in and whispers, science is cool. Hey, a few of them shivered. They did move. My prediction was wrong. And that's okay. That's how we learn. Now, new prediction. What will happen if I shout? All the rice is going to jump off and run away and hide. I predict they will jump up and down like they're on a trampoline. Excellent predictions. Let's see what happens. Everybody dance. Whoa, it was a rice explosion. They went flying everywhere. It was a trampoline. I was right. That was amazing. The sound literally threw the rice into the air. Exactly. The strong vibrations from my loud voice made the plastic wrap shake violently, and that launched the rice. We have successfully made the invisible visible. So my voice can make things move. I'm like a superhero. You are. We all are. Now, for our next experiment, we need to understand how vibrations travel through things. Sam, please get me the ping pong ball, the string, and the big drum. Ooh, are we playing a game? It's a game of physics. We're going to tie the string to the ball and hang it so it is just barely touching the side of the drum. Not pushing it, just resting against it. Okay, gently, gently. There, it's touching. Now what? It's not very exciting. Patience, my friend. Maya, your job is to tap the other side of the drum with this drumstick. Do not hit the ball, do not touch the ball, just tap the drum. Got it. Okay, here I go. Just a little tap. It jumped. The ball jumped away from the drum. How did you do that? You didn't even touch it. Let's analyze. The vibration from Maya's tap didn't just stay on one side. It traveled or conducted through the entire surface of the drum. When the vibration reached the other side, it pushed the ping pong ball. Let me try hitting it harder. Excellent idea. What do we predict will happen, Sam? I predict the ball will jump even farther this time. Let's see if your prediction is correct. Okay, big hit. It flew. The ball went flying sideways. That was a huge kick. My prediction was right. More energy in, more energy out. A harder hit creates a stronger vibration, which kicks the ball with more force. This proves that vibrations travel through solid objects. Just like the sound vibrations traveled through our solid kitchen table to the plate. I get it. It's all starting to connect. This is making more sense than ghosts. I have another idea. Quick, get me that metal coat hanger and some string. We're going to make a hanger gong. A hanger gong? You just make this stuff up, don't you? Science is all about creative experiments. Okay, tie a piece of string to each shoulder of the hanger. Now, Sam, wrap the ends of the strings around your pointer fingers. Okay, the strings are wrapped. Now I'm holding a hanging coat hanger. What's so special about that? Now, plug your ears with those same fingers. Lean forward so the hanger dangles freely and gently swing it so it taps against the edge of the table. 
Okay, plugging my ears, leaning. Here comes the tap. What's happening? He's just standing there. Whoa. What? What happened? It was like a giant church bell. It was so loud and deep, right inside my head. How? It's the same principle. The tap made the metal hanger vibrate. Usually those vibrations travel through the air and sound tinny. But because your fingers were plugged in your ears, the vibrations traveled up the string, through your fingers, and directly into your ear bones. You heard the pure sound of the metal vibrating. I have to try. My turn. My turn. It proves that vibrations travel much better through solids, like string and bone, than they do through air. That was the coolest sound ever. It's like a secret sound that only you can hear. Exactly. Now, for our final and most important experiment. This will show how vibrations can carry a message. It's time to build the string telephone. Yes, I love the string telephone. Let me get the cups. I'll get the good ones without the cracks. And I'll get the string. Should we use the red one? It looks faster. The red one is perfect. Okay, poke a small hole in the bottom of each cup. Now thread the string through and tie a big knot so it doesn't pull out. I'm threading. This is harder than it looks. Got it. One cup is ready. And the second cup is ready? We are officially telephone engineers. Now, the most important rule. The string must be pulled tight. If it's loose and droopy, the experiment will fail. I've got my end. Pulling it tight. It feels like a guitar string. My end is tight too. I'll go first. What should I say? Whisper a secret message that only Maya can hear. Okay. Whispers into his cup. Maya. I think Leo's dad uses extra vanilla in the waffle recipe. Gasps. I can hear you. It's like you're whispering right in my ear. And I think you're right about the vanilla. It works. It really works. But how? My voice is making the bottom of this cup vibrate. See, you can feel it. Those vibrations are traveling down this tight string like cars on a highway. When they get to Maya's cup, they make her cup vibrate. And her ear hears those vibrations as my voice. Let me try. Whispers Sam, the wobbly waffles are not haunted. Over. I hear you. Message received. So the string is the secret? It is. Now, let's test that. Let the string go slack. Let it droop onto the floor. Okay, it's droopy. It's a sad, droopy telephone string now. Now try talking, Sam. Whispers. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. Can you hear the sound of science failing? Nothing. It's gone completely silent. It's like you hung up. That's because the vibrations have no highway to travel on anymore. The loose string can't carry the vibration, so the message gets lost. So for sound to travel like that, it needs a direct, tight path. You've got it. You've all cracked the case. Let's review the evidence one last time. The rice experiment showed us that loud sounds create big vibrations that can make things dance. And the ping pong ball experiment showed us that those vibrations can travel through solid things, like a drum or a table. The hanger gong showed us that vibrations travel even better through solids than through the air. And the string telephone showed us that those vibrations can carry complex sounds, like our voices, over a distance. So, when we were all talking and laughing loudly at the kitchen table, our voices made sound waves that traveled through the air. Those waves hit the table and the plate, making them vibrate. And those vibrations made the wobbly waffles wobble. The case is closed. It wasn't a ghost after all. It was just science. It's always science, Sam. And it's always amazing. This was the best investigation ever. I agree. All this thinking has made me hungry again. Is the waffle evidence still in the kitchen? I believe it is. And I hypothesize that it is ready to be eaten. Yay! Let's go eat the evidence. I'm just glad they didn't actually have ghosts in them. That would have been really awkward. Great work today, team. You used observation, prediction, and experimentation to solve a mystery. Remember to always stay curious.